welcome to Michelle's Sanctuary, where the wings of your imagination will help you fall asleep fast and dream away. Welcome to the Cozy Cotswolds Collection, a three-hour compilation of continuous relaxing sleep stories designed to transport you to the idyllic English countryside. As you unwind before falling asleep, embark on a soothing journey through the picturesque landscapes of the Cotswolds, where timeless charm and tranquility await. You may wish to take this time to subscribe if you haven't already, so you may return to this bucolic landscape whenever your heart desires. In this collection, you will discover four cozy bedtime stories that will lull you into a deep and peaceful slumber. I would like to welcome you to Michelle's Sanctuary. I am Michelle, and as you listen, think of my voice as that of a dear friend and guide who is here to make you feel relaxed and comfortable and truly valued. You have earned this time for yourself every day and should take this moment to honor you. Customize every detail of this story and practice to suit your preferences. Know that you are free to fall asleep at any point you like. Before we journey to the Cotswolds, where time has cast its beauty upon the golden limestone walls for centuries, turn your attention to your breath. Find comfort and release in every nook and cranny, every joint and curve of your physical body as the softness of your bed supports you and you let go. As you feel heavy, as you relax, take in a sip of air through your nose. Imagine you can smell the slick cobblestones of the Cotswolds, coated in fresh rain. Exhale in a great, big, audible sigh and relieve yourself of the day. When you are ready, inhale again deeply, expanding the lowest parts of your belly as you take up all the space you can. And then sigh again, preparing for the sacred moment of repose. One more round, inhale slowly, sipping in the soporific tonic of oxygen. Yawn if you would like, and when you're ready, let everything go in a generous sigh. Feel the stress of the day melt away as you listen to heartwarming tales of community, simple pleasures, and the deep connection between nature and the human spirit, creating a serene and comforting atmosphere that will help you drift to sleep. So snuggle up in your favorite blanket, close your eyes, and let these delightful tales, accompanied by the soothing sounds of rain, transport you to a dreamy haven of serenity and rejuvenation. Stormy Night in the Cotswolds You find yourself on a narrow, winding cobblestone street that offers reflections of quaint limestone cottages in puddles that scatter about. While the sky above is steely gray, and plum black edged storm clouds slowly move towards the village. The stone homes reflect back in a cinematic golden hue. There's a strong sense of place and history, 
that simply permeates the misty air that you take in. A deeply rooted feeling begins in your feet as they step on the damp pavement. This energy travels up your legs and spine and wraps around you in what feels like a homecoming. The connection is so strong as you explore the quaint village that you conjure an idea of what it must be like to be a centuries-old tree that has the deepest of roots. You also feel a sense of belonging among this fairy tale setting. And without the need to question why you feel so sure that you are in the right place right now, you simply accept it and surrender to the beauty that is around you. It feels so good to just go with the flow on this cozy adventure. Your feet are adorned in soft, buttery boots that grip the weathered cobblestones and keep your feet warm and dry. You wear a trench coat that feels like it has a special power, a connection to a person or memory that instills in you a sense of confidence when you wear it. The belt is cinched tightly, like a hug around your waist. The sturdy, water-resistant fabric is in your favorite color, and you deeply appreciate how such a simple piece of clothing can make you feel distinguished and comfortable at the same time. As if this trench coat is an extension of your body, made for you and you alone. The village is quite sleepy at this time just before twilight. Such happens often in places where the gray cast of rainstorms lingers for days. A rich orange glow emanates out of multi-paned windows in small shops and a bookstore and pours onto the street with a promise of coziness and warmth. A few proprietors welcome your presence on this slow day. They offer a smile and friendly wave as you pass. You feel so welcomed by the kind energy of the longtime occupants of the town. You turn onto a residential lane. Dozens of tendrils of ivy plants cascade down a quaint limestone cottage. They are so vibrantly green against the deep amber stone that is weather-worn and has been imprinted with fossils of sea urchins and coral. You thoughtfully run your hand across the stone, feeling flashes of beauty throughout history that come to you with a warm feeling of appreciation. This stone has endured on, and so too have you, over time. What some could perceive as imperfections truly enhance the beauty of the cottage. Your mind drifts as you realize it carries its own unique fossils formed by experiences, some disappointing but many fulfilling, bringing beautiful surprises and the awareness that no matter what, you have prevailed. As you roam the English village, 
you are reminded of how time and experiences have shaped you and helped you become you. Perhaps it is the romantic spirit of the incoming mist or the storybook architecture to be found around every bend. But you find yourself revisiting the story of your life with a new lens as you appreciate the quaint historic cottages that are only as they are now because of the weathering brought by experiences and time. You recognize these same aspects in yourself with more appreciation than judgment than perhaps you ever have. The imprints of time are what make the energy of the Cotswolds so charming, warm, and inviting. The lane begins to narrow and you can smell burning wood as chimneys emit plumes of smoke from a row of cottages set aglow by fires in the hearths. You walk and curiously glimpse into the window of one of the fairy tale homes to see a cat nestled within the sill of a window. Her tail is wrapped around her curled up body so she may use its tip as a fluffy pillow beneath her chin. She seems so relaxed and content, and it gives you a sense of warmth against the cool, damp winter's air. You inhale and exhale as your breath condenses and forms a cloud before you. You remember the first time you ever saw your own breath. Take this moment to play around and laugh to yourself, smiling as you exhale and watch your own life force hit the cool evening air. The sky darkens and a breeze begins to whip around the narrow streets as you continue to explore. You give yourself a gentle hug, rubbing your hands against the arms of your trench coat for warmth. The road begins to incline over a rolling hill as you see a strike of lightning in the distance. You are grateful to be a shy distance away from the bed and breakfast where you have chosen to stay for this holiday. The rain begins to fall heavier as large drops splat against the surrounding cottages and pavement ahead. They fall on your face and roll off your trench coat. And while cold, they are invigorating in a way that reminds you of your own aliveness. And it feels good to be alive, to be present. A few more drops fall upon your lips and you lick them and they taste like briny water on a metal spoon. You inhale the damp air and smell the minerality of wet stones and the fragrance of nearby woodlands on a breeze that meets your face. Just ahead, you see the bed and breakfast where you are staying. There is a long, narrow driveway. And as you walk, 
the incline feels good and that you feel your own strength yet at the same time makes you aware of your own tiredness that is beginning to take over. You revel in the contrasting feelings. Your body feels heavy, yet you also have the contentment that follows a day full of exertion and adventures. It's a good kind of tired. You arrive at the top of the driveway, which widens beneath an awning and entryway to the centuries-old manor. You stop for a moment to take in the beauty as lightning shoots across the sky above and illuminates the outline of the peaked roofs and deep purple-black storm clouds. You have arrived just in time. You enter the main door to be instantly greeted by the friendly innkeeper whose family has maintained this charming inn for generations. Her welcome is as warm as the wave of air that hits the cool outside air as the door opens and then closes behind you. She takes your trench coat and hangs it on a mahogany coat rack in the entryway. She gestures to an antique marble top table upon which a pot of tea is waiting with some biscuits and a small placard that has your name and reads in delicate cursive. We are delighted you chose to stay with us. Please make yourself at home. You smile and pour yourself a cup and fix it to your preferences and take one of the biscuits. As she asks if you are in need of anything for the night, you thank her and say you are just fine and ready to rest for the night. You walk down a hallway to a grand mahogany staircase that is covered with a luxurious sapphire and ivory patterned rug. As you ascend one step at a time, you feel as if you are floating upon the crests of the English Channel. Your bleary eyes and tired body feel heavier with each step as you ascend, counting as you go in a dreamy haze, the kind a sailor might feel after being away for a long time. and arriving to the warm comforts of land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Eleven, twelve. You arrive at the landing to follow a sign that points to your room number. Walking down the long hallway, the sound of the rain intensifies as it pounds the gabled roof and the row of windows that line the hall. You come to the heavy wooden door of your room and insert the skeleton key that dangles from a tasseled keychain into the lock, listening as it clicks and the door opens into your cozy room. 
A fire glows in the hearth, and the wood crackles and pops. You walk to an antique end table and armchair to relax and finish your biscuit and take a few last sips of tea before placing it down. You notice a bathrobe draped across a hope chest at the end of a canopy bed made of hand-carved wood. You rise, at first distracted by the medieval stories told in the delicate swirls of the four posters. You run your hand over the cool, polished wood, imagining the time and place when the bed was crafted and giving thought to the creative soul behind its design. You open your eyes and change into the plush bathrobe, tying the belt around you Before getting comfortable beneath the covers, you walk to the church-style windows that form peaks beneath the ceiling and end just a hair above the wooden floor. You look out to watch the raindrops cascading down the colorful stained glass panes like tears of joy. The rain kisses the rolling hills with the promise of making them more richly hued in shades of emerald. The golden warm light of the fire reflects on the windows and refracts the raindrops into prisms that hypnotize you momentarily. Thunder rolls in the distance and the pelts of rain create a gentle rhythm that lulls you into a dreamy, trance-like state. A heavy wave of tiredness demands your attention and you peel yourself away from the window and walk across the room. You approach the high canopy bed and pull back the hand-sewn quilt made with patches of soft and colorful cotton. The sky continues to light up in flashes of silver and white as you settle into the comfort of the bed. Thunder echoes over the grassy hills that roll around the estate in lush waves of dark green. Your eyelids close heavily upon your eyes as you sink deeper and deeper down, drifting between worlds, tipping your toes into the comforts of sleep, and then floating back to the room Take in the timeless comfort of a roaring fire as rain continues to fall. You float between worlds like the streams of rain upon the stained glass windows, surrendering and letting go. And in this state, 
of peace and contentment. You may let go of my voice and fall asleep, or you may continue on with the next story. Return to the Cotswolds. Coming back to the Cotswolds is always much easier than leaving. The village is like a recurring dream, a place you have ventured before and are always welcome when you return. On the cusp of autumn, you arrive in the charming English countryside and enjoy a walk through emerald green pastures that roll on in hills and greet your feet like soft cushions. A summer breeze creates ripples in the verdant grass and wildflowers that ebb down the hills of the English countryside. A few blades of grass rise above your ankles and softly caress your skin. The greenery is dappled with wildflowers that appear like rainbow confetti and fragrant the air with floral notes that marry the smell of fresh grass. And in all the decades that candle makers and perfumers have tried to create an aroma called clean, none have succeeded in the way Mother Nature has in the Cotswolds. You close your eyes and feel the hot sun on your face. You are dressed in a style of clothing you do not often wear, but it is perfectly suited for a holiday in the Cotswolds. You walk past a field of sunflowers and a meadow where sheep graze. A walking path leads you to a footbridge that arcs over a brook. For the first time in 150 years, the species known as the large blue butterfly has resettled in the bucolic landscape. You watch at least a dozen of these butterflies flutter overhead. Their iridescent dusky blue wings are edged with black and speckled with ebony dots. You imagine their ancestors fluttering through the countryside when the world was a quieter and simpler place. Puffy clouds drift across the cornflower blue sky and cover the sun, giving you a moment of reprieve from the record-breaking heat of the day. You follow a road that leads to the village, and every now and then you pass a limestone cottage. The limestone facades gleam in the summer light and appear as vibrant as the yellow hues of pollen. You walk by gardens, well-maintained and abundant with a summer harvest of squash and tomatoes and strawberries. The people of the Cotswolds are friendly, and when you greet a resident as you pass by, they offer you a fresh-picked strawberry from their garden. At first you feel modest and politely decline, but the plump red berry is so appealing, and they insist you take the sweet fruit and bite on it, feeling the juice cascade down your throat. It refreshes you from the heat, and you thank the kind soul for sharing this. You know any future encounters with strawberries will conjure your memory of this generous moment in the English countryside serves as a reminder that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. 
darker clouds roll in overhead. And the breeze brings with it a slight chill. You welcome the cool air that is a signal of rain on the way as well as a reminder that fall is not so far away either. The clean smell of summer is now replaced with a salty and metallic aroma of incoming rain. You arrive in the village and walk by the limestone cottages that are now more abundant and built closer together blue sky has become a steely gray, and plum black edged storm clouds slowly move towards the village. The colors of the stone homes appear all the more saturated and radiant in their cinematic golden hue, contrasting the muted tones of the sky. As you step into the heart of the village, feel as though you are revisiting a dream that you have longed to experience again. It's like entering a faded childhood memory of a vacation spot. It makes you feel connected to a sense of safety and familiarity. When you walk through this Cotswolds village, you feel as if the special place remembers you as well as you remember it. Your home away from home. Here to welcome you whenever you return, regardless of how much time has passed. You notice the change from walking on the lush, grassy knolls of the countryside to the stone path of the village. The earth is now firm beneath your feet, conjures a sense of strength and endurance. A soft mist rolls in and hovers over the glistening stones like an apparition. The village has the bustle of summer visitors, but the impending storm inspires everyone to take cover. Some people tuck into the small shops and a bookstore that line the main street. You nod and greet them as you walk along, feel welcomed by their warm smiles and joyous energy. The proprietor of the inns and pubs are just as welcoming, and some of their faces are familiar and etched in your mind with as much clarity as the faces of dear friends from long ago. Out of habit from other visits, you run your fingers across the tendrils of ivy that grow down a quaint limestone home. They are vibrant shades of green and cascade down the amber stone that is weather-worn and has been imprinted with fossils sea urchins and coral. The ivy reminds you of lush seaweed brought in by the sea to rest on wet golden sand. You carefully run your hand across the coarse stone, feeling flashes of beauty throughout history that come to you in quick images like in a dream recall other times you have run your fingers across an object and picked up the energy and story it holds. The limestone walls of the Cotswolds remind you of your inner strength. The fossils remain on the limestone like impressions of time that are carried within you and express themselves through laugh lines and scars. However your life has played out, you are still here, remaining curious and vibrant and strong like the spirit of this beloved village. 
The warm glow of lights within old windows pours out into the darkness brought by the incoming storm. You follow this angelic light, walking into the heart of the village. A band plays inside a pub that you pass, and the melody carries out onto the street reverberating into small alleys of the village in faint whispers. For a moment you take in a deep breath and sigh. You close your eyes and feel deep gratitude. For this is life. All the impressions and sensory experiences of being in tune with what is happening right now. Often the mind may drift to thoughts about your life situation, but those are merely thoughts. And your perception of the situation is merely an imagined framework. You'd much rather focus on life on the cool breeze and smell of flowers and rain, the sensation of wind-swept hair, and the beating of your heart. These sensations fill the deepest reservoir within you that may overflow with gratitude, hope, and inspiration. It feels nice to be welcome always this friendly place in the world. The road begins to narrow and you travel deeper into the residential part of the village. Many townspeople have retreated to the cottages that are stacked like mustard-hued blocks. You glimpse into the windows of these storybook homes, catching glimpses of other lives, as if watching vignettes in a film. An old lady rocks in a chair with a delicate cup of tea in her wrinkled hand. Her other hand rests on the back of a calico cat that sleeps comfortably atop a blanket on her lap. The cat's tail is wrapped around her curled up body so she may use its tip as a fluffy pillow beneath her chin. The lady and kitty appear very relaxed and content. And the scene gives you a sense of warmth as the first cold splats of rain begin to fall. A breeze begins to whip around the narrow streets as you continue to walk. You give yourself a gentle hug and rub your hands against your bare arms the cusp of being cold, your body still carries the warmth of the afternoon sun on your sun-kissed skin. The road begins to incline over a rolling hill, and you see a strike of lightning in the distance. You are grateful to be a shy distance away from the inn, where you have always stayed in the Cotswolds. The rain begins to fall heavier, and large drops splat against the surrounding homes and streets. They fall on your lips and you taste the water that is as clean as the air in the rolling meadows. Your hair and face are soon wet, and the rain invigorates you remind you that this is life happening to you right now. You can feel, smell, and taste it. The wet stones smell flinty, and the fragrance from the nearby woodlands wafts on the breeze of the damp air that hits your face, smelling of rich, sweet earth. 
In the darkness, you see the soft glow of the inn where you are staying. There is a long, narrow driveway, and the incline alerts you of your tiredness that begins to take over. Your muscles slightly burn with the contentment that follows a day full of exertion and adventures. And even as you exert more energy, your lungs feel relaxed and each breath comes easily. The top of the driveway widens beneath an awning, an entryway to this grand mansion. You turn around and look out over the rolling hills set behind the golden glow of the village. Lightning shoots across the sky and illuminates the outlines of the peaked roofs and limestones in a display of silver flashes and gold reflections. Storm clouds are lined with amethyst and ebony underbellies and roll in steadily. You have arrived just in time to enjoy the storm from the safety of the inn. You enter the main door and are instantly greeted by the innkeeper, Lillian. A warm wave of air hits the cool outside air as the door opens and then closes behind you. Lillian's accent delivers words in a kind song as she greets you by name with a warm pat on your back. Her family has maintained this charming inn for generations, and at times you have been led down a hallway that serves as a gallery of her ancestors and the guests who have visited throughout a century. Lillian brings a soft towel and helps dry your hair and your face. You thank her. The smells of the inn take you back to your last visit. Notes of tea, baked goods, dried lavender, and burning wood weave together in an aromatic elixir that brings you peace and a sleepy feeling. Lillian walks to an antique marble top table and lifts a pot of tea to pour it into a cup. From memory, she prepares it exactly to your liking. She then prepares a plate with freshly baked muffins made from local berries and brings them to you. A couple congregates in the main room by a fire started right before your arrival. It was hard to imagine a fire would be desired when you walked beneath the heat of the late afternoon sun. But the storm has lowered the temperature and dampened the air, so that warm tea and a roaring fire are the perfect antidotes. You sit by the fire and are greeted by the other guests. Lillian asks if you need anything and explains she has left a care package in your room. She wants to make sure all your needs are met, and your heart radiates with a feeling of love and appreciation, as warm as the heat of the flickering flames in the fireplace. She places the tasseled keychain and skeleton key to your room into the palm of your hand. You run your fingers over the fringe, she says good night and you are left to listen to soft murmurs of fellow guests and the crackling fire. You finish the muffin and the silky tea cascades down your throat following the tiny crumbs. You are satiated and quite tired. For a moment you watch the rain cascade down the old windows and the marmalade flames 
lick the soot-covered walls of the fireplace. This room has warmed so many souls over the decades, offering respite from the cold. You once again feel grateful. Tiredness takes over, and you rise and say goodnight to the couple. You continue towards the grand mahogany staircase and familiar sapphire and ivory patterned rug that cascades down the steps. You often dream of this flowing carpet because it reminds you of the beloved place for sleep that exists in this inn. You walk on it and ascend one step at a time. And like before, you feel as if you are floating upon the wave crests of the Atlantic. Your tired body feels heavier with each step as you ascend. One step at a time, counting as you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You arrive at the landing and turn towards the room where you always stay. Walking down the long cavernous hallway, the sound of the rain intensifies. It falls on the roof and streams down the windows that line the hall. You arrive at the heavy wooden door of your room and insert the skeleton key into the lock softly clicks, and the door opens into your cozy suite, lit by colorful glass lamps that warmly glow. You walk towards an antique end table, place the key onto it. You discover a gift basket placed on the armchair. It contains cotton pajamas with an embroidered message dream away. There is a bottle of lavender spray that you spritz on your neck and the sateen pillowcases on the bed. You change into the buttery soft pajamas. The fabric feels light and cool on your skin. You remove a toothbrush from the basket and toothpaste Repair to brush your teeth. You walk to the bathroom, and it is regal with artistic brass fixtures and a deep old-fashioned sink. You brush your teeth and then splash cold water on your face. A bar of soap made by a villager is embedded with dried wildflowers picked from the nearby meadow. You run the bar across your face and are brought back to your afternoon in the fields. You wash away the lather and your skin now feels soft and clean. You return to the bedroom and walk to church-style windows that you have looked out before. They form a peak beneath the ceiling and they end just above the wooden floor. You look out to watch the raindrops cascading down the colorful stained glass panes like tears of joy. Lightning flashes and creates colorful prisms in the raindrops while also illuminating the jewel tones of the stained glass. Thunder rolls in the distance. The pelts of rain create this gentle rhythm that lulls you 
into a trance state. You cannot recall the last time you felt so perfectly primed for sleep. Your body feels heavy and tired. You approach the high canopy bed and peel back the hand-sewn quilt made with patches of soft and colorful cotton. The room is suddenly illuminated by silvery white flashes of lightning. Thunder continues to roll through the grassy hills that protect the estate like soft waves of dark green. Your eyelids close heavily upon your eyes and you sink deeper and deeper down, ready to drift off to sleep. You inhale and softly sigh like a sleeping baby as you go deeper and deeper within, letting go of my voice, floating away like the streams of rain that fall on the stained glass windows, drifting and drifting, letting go, ready for sleep. You take in a deep breath, and inhale the fragrant lavender spray. From head to toe, your body is awash in a feeling of contentment. You can't remember the last time you felt so relaxed. And you may give in to this contentment and welcome sleep. Or you may drift in two Another beguiling season in the Cotswolds. Winter in the Cotswolds. The Cotswolds have long been a destination for travelers near and far. And the region is home to the oldest English inn. Known for its rolling meadows and winding rivers. The centuries old honey-hued limestone buildings bring a picturesque quality to the bucolic villages. One village has remained undeveloped since the 1600s and gives credence to the notion that you can visit the Cotswolds and travel through time. The changes brought from each season magnify the beauty of the area in varying ways but the cozy aspects of small villages are best enjoyed when the weather is less amenable. You arrive one day in December at a time when the holiday festivities and lights are in full gear. The lush green wreaths decorated with garnet velvet ribbons and pops of color to the wooden doors of the golden residences. A holiday tree is in the center of the village and trimmed perfectly and made festive with colorful metallic ornaments and red, blue, and green holiday lights. The gold filaments of Edison bulbs strung across the edges of thatched roofs and holiday market stalls bring an old world feeling the village twinkles in the late afternoon as the grip of winter's darkness takes hold. Flurries fall on a hand-knitted wool cap that you purchased from a local stall and now wear. Decorated with a snowflake design and red pom-poms, it may not be your typical choice, but the purchase felt festive and fun on this day meant for celebration. And travel like this brings you the playful freedom to try things that stray from the norm. The ivory ear flaps are soft and keep your ears from turning red in the cold. 
your boots grip the cobblestone walkway along a river that reflects the holiday lights like an oil painting in a gallery. You smile and take in a deep breath. The air smells like snow, holiday treats, and wood smoke. The soothing aroma conjures thoughts of baking in a cozy kitchen, nestling by a fire, and building snowmen in a field. Fragrances like this become medicinal as they land in your olfactory hub and become a portal to pleasant memories. This day more than most makes you realize how an evocative smell can all at once become a feeling. In this moment, the air smells like happiness and fun. Every village in the Cotswolds boasts its own seasonal offering. Skating ponds and small boutiques are populated with visitors who fill the air with laughter and animated conversation. Musicians and carolers perform on tiny streets beneath icicle lights strung across the way like clotheslines connecting limestone townhouses. In a nearby castle, purple, pink, blue, green, and red lights beam on the towering walls, and every tree and shrub in sight drips in shimmering holiday lights. Patrons pour into pubs, where friends and family gather over hearty meals in the warm glow of the family-run businesses. There is a neighborly feel. And while most are strangers or travelers from elsewhere, you cannot pass by without someone wishing you a good evening or saying hello. The novelty of being a traveler, free to reinvent yourself, and heed to your every whim. As balanced on this journey with a feeling of being home and welcome. The rolling meadows outside the villages, in particular Cotswold Way, are covered in fresh snow and conjure thoughts of gigantic marshmallows. The local sheep, with their wool overgrown for winter, calmly roam the fields after an afternoon spent frolicking and playing in the fresh powder. The very hat you wear came from a local sheep farm and was made by a teenaged girl who loved the sheep like family. A few children pack snowballs on a lane that leads to the holiday markets. The snow is still too light and fluffy to properly stick together, but they try anyway. When launched, their snowballs quickly erupt like a dandelion clock scattering the path. The children laugh and run ahead, so caught in the present moment that you are inspired. For at that age, it's easy to get lost in the splendor of the now. You approach the Christmas market, where dozens of stalls form rows of delightful offerings. Old-time candy sticks and English toffee are sold at one. Artisan stalls sell paintings of the English countryside and homemade candles. Some candles contain dried lavender and wildflowers from the summer meadows while others are in season and contain evergreen sprigs. Tin and wooden boxes of tea are wrapped in fancy ribbons and sold along with hand-painted teapots. A family sells wool sweaters, socks, and mittens that are dyed and knit at their local sixth-generation farm. You can sense the passion and love 
put into the diverse items being sold by the sellers at the market. When one buys a handmade soap, one is not simply buying an object. They are buying a story, supporting a legacy, and helping the new generation continue with traditions. The same is true for every gift and item crafted for the festival. You walk by a dairy stand that sells eggnog in glass milk jugs and perfumes the air with nutmeg. Farmstead sheep milk cheeses are carefully packaged and available to sample. Your walk through the market is fully immersive as you waft through feelings and memories that are nurturing and inspiring. You feel uplifted being around people who do what they love. Holiday trees and wreaths are sold at the edge of the market. There is a table set up and a wreath making class is about to begin. A middle aged woman named Anne approaches you when she notices you are looking on with intrigue. She says you are welcome to join in as there is one open spot. It feels like the perfect way to end your stroll through the market. Other travelers surround the wooden table to partake in the class. Vibrant jewel-toned velvet and sparkling gold and silver ribbons drape down the edge of the table. Dried holly and juniper berries and pine cones are piled high between the stacks of Fraser fir, cedar, and white pine branches, and gives you a circular metal frame and instructs the group on how to weave the branches properly. You inhale the wintry air that feels mentholated and cleansing from the aroma of the fresh evergreens. The basket is filled to the brim with holiday ornaments, some whimsical and fun, while others are classic and round. You notice the blue tint to the Fraser fur and the varying textures of the evergreen needles. Some are waxy, blunt, and strong while others are willowy and delicate. Like the children in the snow, you are lost in the moment. Time escapes you. As you focus on the creative and meditative process of bending and forming the branches into a wreath. You select the ribbons and decorations that appeal to your sensibilities. It's an exercise in remembering how empowering it is in life. When you are given the free will to choose what brings you the most joy. Perhaps it has been some time since you last appreciated this feeling. It's wonderful. And the dozen or so others who work around you are equally caught up in their creations, occasionally murmuring to a beloved or emitting a sound of contentment when they find something that works just right. You are so entranced by your wreath you fail to notice when your nose and cheeks begin to prickle from the drop in temperature. As you complete your wreath, you feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. You smile having enjoyed something so deeply in an unexpected way. 
and showers compliments on everyone. And in her tone, it is obvious she is genuine and enjoys the class as much as everyone who has attended. You pay her for the wreath and she wishes you the happiest of holidays. She places a peppermint candy cane in your hand. You walk through the village with the wreath balanced in the crook of your elbow. It may not seem possible, but carrying this festive decoration stirs an even greater outpouring of kind hellos and season's greetings from people you pass. You place the candy cane in your mouth and feel the mint tingle on your lips and tongue as they become bright red from the vibrant stripes. The lively sounds of the heart of the village become quieter as you make your way towards the inn. Holiday bells jingle when the doors of pubs and a bookshop open and close. The sky is a smoky black and makes the sparkling holiday lights become dreamy as small halos form around the bulbs in the damp, crisp air. Snowflakes fall and kiss the angled roofs and dust the cobblestone sidewalk. You feel the history of the village rising up from the earth with each step. It carries an enduring spirit that has weathered centuries and yet still remains. And you have weathered so many challenges in your own life and still remain. The Cotswolds is a magical place to connect with resilience. The countryside and villages have also played a significant role in unlocking the brilliant imaginations of writers. Jane Austen and Lewis Carroll, J.M. Barry and J.K. Rowling. Their stories come to mind as you think of Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan's Neverland around and can see the magic in the air and the reflective specks of oversized snowflakes that fall around you like a shower of celestial stars. The hardest aspects of life soften in the glow of the mystical and imaginative. The ugliness of life may be transformed into beauty by the power of storytelling, hope, and a sprinkle of holiday magic. As you walk a narrow lane that leads up a hill to the inn, you reflect on the powerful hand that creates the story of your life. You realize that hand is your very own. And it is in the Cotswolds that you recognize that your mind may find beauty and joy in the mundane and recognize how it outshines all the challenges that come your way. It is a choice that is always yours. Your winter coat brushes against a limestone cottage and removes a light dusting of snow. Even in the darkness of a wintry night, the honey-hued and warm stone shines without sunlight and draws your attention. You stop and remove your glove to place your bare hand on the cold, textured stone. You run your fingers across fossils, 
formed by broken shells and sea urchins and realize that strength prevailed. You have more in common with the lustrous stone blocks of the Cotswolds than you could have imagined. You are a living mosaic of memories, experiences, and connections that have happened throughout the history of your life. You feel the history of the village wash over you, just as the history of your life washes over you, and reminds you that like these wondrous cottages, you are still here. You put your glove back on and continue on your way. Snowflakes melt on the tip of your nose and land on your eyelashes. And you feel the coldness settling in your body. Rather than bemoan the cold, you simply experience the wintry chill without judgment. It provides a contrast that will deepen your appreciation for a warm night at the inn. The challenging times in life are fleeting moments and more easily navigated when you recognize that moments of splendor, comfort, and peace will return in time. Christmas trees glow within the cottages that pepper the lane, and plumes of smoke rise out of the chimneys and fragrant the air with the smell of burning wood. It is so quiet you can hear the sound of snowflakes landing on your coat as your boots crunch on the fallen snow on the path. Your breath condenses and forms a cloud before you. You recall how peculiar it was the first time you saw your breath. The condensation reminds you that things may exist all around you, but not always be visible. A sharp wind whips around the cottages, and you embrace yourself in a hug rubbing your hands over your arms. You approach a familiar long driveway that leads towards the inn. You have been here before, but you felt this sense of deja vu even on your first visit. It made you wonder if you had been here in a dream or a past life. Or had it been your imagination looking at photos with a deep longing to visit? Perhaps that created a story in anticipation that made the inn feel so familiar. Whatever the explanation, it does not matter so much as the feeling and sense you get that the inn feels like home. Your calf muscles and legs become alert to the incline, and you relish the enervating soft burn in them as you climb up the hill. Again, the promise of rest and warmth offer hope and reprieve from the contrast the cold. The inn is aglow in holiday lights that line the perimeter of the dwelling. Gold lights drape down from the roof, and in every one of the dozens of windows, a flickering electric candle glows. The grandest wreath you have ever seen hangs on the front door. It is adorned with purple velvet ribbons 
and colorful glass ornaments that reflect your face and playful wool cap like spherical holiday mirrors. You open the front door and jingle bells the size of baseballs alert the innkeeper of your arrival with a joyous melody. Lillian, the innkeeper, carries on in the tradition of generations of family members who ran the historic inn. She greets you with a warm smile. The dry air wraps around you as you come in from the cold. The inn smells of baked apples, a burning fire, hot tea and fresh scones, and each of these aromatic notes hits you in a comforting way. A few guests are gathered around the holiday tree and add silvery tinsel that conjures thoughts of angel hair. The resident Maine coon cat sleeps curled up near the roaring fire. Her furry body rises and falls with each content breath and she softly purrs. The main room has a wall of windows that run from floor to ceiling with dozens of tiny panes. Through the ivory lattice frames, you see the vibrant large white snowflakes fall on the rolling hill behind the inn, set against a backdrop of a blue-black sky. Lillian remarks on your beautiful wreath, and you remember that it still dangles from the crook of your arm. She offers to show you to your room, and has prepared tea and a small meal for you in anticipation of your arrival. Lillian leads you towards a grand mahogany staircase covered with a luxurious sapphire and ivory patterned rug. Its nautical quality reminds you of the limestones of the Cotswolds, delicately crafted by the sea long ago. With each step, you feel more and more tired. With each step, Feel more and more relief that you are in the most comforting atmosphere to be during a winter spell. Lillian is dressed in a long burgundy velvet frock that slips across each stair as you ascend. You arrive at the landing and walk past a few doors before coming to your room. Lillian passes you a skeleton key with a tasseled keychain and says to give her a ring if there's anything you need during your stay. You have not stayed in this room before, yet when the heavy door opens into it, you feel as though you are returning home. A fire glows in the fireplace and the wood crackles and pops. Boughs of holly are strung across the mantle, and a small Christmas tree is lit in the corner of the room. The room is cast in a beautiful combination of cool and warm tones. From the sapphire holiday lights on the tree and the amber light from the fire, a velvet comforter covers a canopy bed with satin curtains. And holiday hues of spruce green and gold brocade. A small table near the fire has a silver tea tray that holds a pot of tea, a bowl of steaming soup, and a plate of scones. You hang your wreath on a brass hook on the back of the door. 
now contained indoors. The rich smell of pine and spruce fills the air. You admire your masterpiece with appreciation and awe. You remove your winter coat and place it on a hanger in a mahogany wood armoire. You walk towards the antique table that contains your supper and sit in a satin armchair. Everything is the perfect temperature to warm you and overcome any lingering cold from your day of adventures. The silky tea and soup flow down your throat and you savor every moment of this experience. You notice how slowly you eat free of the urge to rush that often haunts your day-to-day -day life. For once, you enjoy things at your own pace. One sip, one swallow, one taste at a time. You save the holiday scones for last. The flaky crust melts on your tongue the same delicate ease of snowflakes that melted on your nose. You look outside the window to see the snow is still falling and riding on the December winds. Upon finishing the meal, you take a moment and sigh and smile. Holiday is exactly what you have needed. You rise and prepare for bed. Your luggage arrived before you as it was dropped off before you began your exploration of the village. You change into your favorite and most comfy bedclothes. You head to the bathroom catch a reflection in the antique brass-framed mirror. You see a sparkle and liveliness in your eyes that you haven't recognized in some time. Perhaps you weren't paying attention, but now you are. Your face looks radiant and healthy. You brush your teeth and as you do, you realize a weight has been lifted from your chest. It's one you didn't even realize you were carrying until it mysteriously dropped off. Feeling so good and relaxed, feeling each breath come without tension, and feeling a lightness in your body is just another reminder of how healing this magical part of the world can be. You return to the canopy bed and pull back the heavy velvet comforter. You climb into the bed and draw the lush curtains around you to feel nestled in a cocoon. You sink deeply into the soft bed as the mattress and pillows contour perfectly around your body in total support. The marmalade flames of the fire have died down into lava-hued embers, just in time for the sweet to become cooler and for you to enjoy the warmth of the heavy comforter. Close your eyes and begin to drift. Your mind is as amenable as the snowflakes that surrender to the wind and land softly wherever they are led. As you surrender to the sensation of floating, you imagine traveling above the shimmering holiday lights of the Cotswolds, 
from an aerial view, you take in the rolling snowy meadows that the sheep call home. You are touched by the magical energy of the timeless villages that feed the imaginations of artists and dreamers. You embrace the imaginative creator within you and allow your imagination to bring you to sleep or to escape to the Cotswolds in one more story. Farmhouse in the Cotswolds. The persistent rain of spring is to thank for the rolling emerald hills of the Cotswolds, where you drive down a winding road that weaves around iconic stone farmhouses and churches. The light of golden hour enhances the beauty of the mustard yellow limestone facades that reflect the honeyed light. Cottages in the Cotswolds are known for their simplicity in design, showcasing a notable chimney and steep gabled roofs that point to the sunset sky. These stone cottages first appeared in the English countryside during the 16th and 17th centuries. Many of the original dwellings remain in the villages and dabble the bucolic countryside. The earliest of these storybook cottages were first built by rural laborers and sheep farmers who constructed the dwellings one stone at a time. The name Cotswolds has often been thought to mean sheep enclosure in rolling hills. With the car windows open to welcome the balmy breeze, a smell of fertile land and fresh grass hit your nose. The region is so quiet that every now and then you hear sheep bleating in the distance. You drive over an old stone bridge that crosses the Thames, the famous river that flows over 215 miles through England, making its way to London. It's hard to imagine the bustling West End shares the serene, glassy river. But then again, everything is connected in some way if you're willing to dig deep enough. You drive slowly over the bridge, watching as a couple of swans lead their four fluffy gray signets across the waterway. The golden sun reflects on the river, backlighting the magnificent birds and their fuzzy babies as they gracefully glide atop the glittering golden water. The beauty of this moment causes a catch in your breath. Everything sparkles around you and it causes a sparkling sensation to rise up in your chest, warming your heart. You continue on your journey and come to a fork in the road where you turn right on a narrow lane. A weathered white wooden sign reads Utopia Fields with a playful pun as the U in Utopia is replaced with E-W-E. As you continue up a gravel driveway to a charming farmhouse the vantage point reveals dozens of sheep grazing in the fields. In the soft blue glow of twilight, 
you are struck by the beauty of the architecture. Ivy creeps up the limestone walls, dripping around light blue shutters. A garden rife with bright flowers, berries and vegetables is just beyond the home. Soft amber light illuminates the many windows of the centuries-old house, and though far from home, the storybook allure offers a sense of calming familiarity. You park the car and gather your travel bag and step out into the cool air of dusk. You take in a deep breath and sigh, peering out over the tranquil vista, full of delight that in the morning you will have an entire day to explore the Cotswolds. The owner opens the door to the farmhouse and a lively border collie runs to greet you. You run your fingers through his thick fur. As the owner tells you not to mind Henry, the kind man comes down the stone steps to help with your bag and welcomes you to Utopia Field, introducing himself as Malcolm. He explains that his wife, Felicia, an eldest daughter and younger son, are tending to the animals. He guides you through the entryway and up a set of wooden stairs to your room as Henry follows behind, his tail dusting the stairs for the entire ascent. The room is cozy and inviting with a comfortable bed and plush armchair by windows that look out over the picturesque fields beyond the house. Warm colors accent the room, lit by an orange antique glass hurricane lamp set on an oak side table. There is a fireplace in the room, which Malcolm says may come in handy tomorrow night when the forecast predicts rain. A floor-to-ceiling bookshelf contains classics and collections of English poetry. Framed photos of various farm animals sleeping in cozy bales of hay and curled up in the barn decorate the walls. Malcolm mentions that you're the only guest tonight but another couple will be checking in tomorrow. He gathers Henry to leave. He says to let him or his wife know if you need anything, and then wishes you good night, closing the door behind him. You wash up and prepare for bed, changing into the most comfortable flannel pajamas you own. You perch yourself in the armchair with a journal, inspired to write as you peer out onto the moonlit hills, a navy blue sky twinkling with stars. You imagine the shepherds leading their flocks throughout the countryside and feel so grateful for the comforts of the farmhouse as you settle for the night and fall asleep. The next morning you awaken to light pouring through the ivory lace curtains and the melodious sounds of birds chirping outside the windows. You rise and stretch and open the window a crack to take in the sweet aroma of morning. Dewdrops glisten on the hills below, and you spot Henry and Malcolm leading the sheep and goats to a distant field. 
His daughter and son are in an adjacent field, feeding the chickens. He dressed comfortably for a day of exploring the farm and beyond. You make your way downstairs to the kitchen, where you meet Felicia for the first time. She has prepared a hearty breakfast from farm fresh items. You sit down at the antique wooden dining room table, warmed with gratitude for her hospitality. Felicia invites you to explore the farm, as many new furry additions were born in the spring. She returns to the kitchen to tidy up leaving you to enjoy the warmth from the sunlight pouring in through the windows and the clotted cream and scones she prepared. You recognize a welcome change in your body. Your chest feels light. Your muscles feel strong yet relaxed and soft at the same time. Every part of your body feels vibrant and healthy, free of any aches or tension. After breakfast, you take a walk around the grounds. You feel your feet hover above the grass, moving along with the tepid breeze. You become more aware of sensations in general. The distant buzz of sheep, the clucking of chickens, the rustle of the tall grass and wildflowers, and the occasional excited bark of Henry create an idyllic soundtrack. A curious tortoiseshell cat follows you tucking in the shadows of the fence until she senses you are someone to trust. She catches up to you and rubs her warm, purring body against your shins. You bend down to pet her and say hello. Even though you've traveled to the Cotswolds on a solo journey, there's not a moment that you have felt alone. The air is cool and crisp. Yet as the sun rises higher in the sky, the morning dew evaporates as warm light cloaks the farm. You come across a flock of lambs playing on a knoll jumping and frolicking in the sunshine. The cat playfully darts towards them. And though they are more than double her size, they startle and clear the way like a parting of the tides. You can't help but laugh at the cat's prowess. You can't help but wonder what it must be like to experience the newness of everything as the lambs do. Without much thought, the cat becomes your guide and you follow her to a mulch path that weaves along a fenced-in meadow where chestnut horses graze with their foals. The young ponies are covered in fuzzy fur that will turn into sleek coats by summer's end. A skylark flies overhead, distracting the cat with its whistling song that echoes over the meadows. The cat leads you to a pond, brimming with lily pads and turtles sunning on rocks. The cat discovers shade beneath a willow tree and rolls in the grass. 
you sit next to her, feeling the cool, soft earth beneath you, grounding you in this peaceful scene. A brood of yellow ducklings waddle to the sun-drenched side of the pond and topple into the water. So young, they've yet to learn how to gracefully enter. Their clumsiness makes you smile. You try to recall what it was like to be so carefree when learning something new and making mistakes. It seems to have gotten harder with time as the expectations for doing things right came with age. You vow to be more understanding and open to learning new things, knowing that life is a sequence of opportunities to grow and build upon. It never stops. It's never supposed to. You lose time in the hypnotic reflections of the cotton puff clouds on the rippling pond and the squiggly turns of the ducklings as they glide across the water and around the lily pads. The cat falls asleep in the grass and extends her paw placing it on your hand. You feel a connection, one that humbles you and makes you honored to be trusted by this animal that you just met. Looking out on the pastures, you harbor a deep sense of being exactly where you are meant to be. For all the moments of strife you've endured in life, days like these make it worthwhile when you think there is so little you would change if it meant missing out on the splendor. As late morning becomes early afternoon, you stand and return to the farmhouse. The cat takes off to explore. You run into Malcolm, who mentions a storm is coming in the evening. But you are welcome to borrow the bike and ride into town before it arrives. The winding roads feel different experienced on a bicycle as your muscles propel you up the inclines and you revel in the feeling of flying downhill. With a crystal blue sky overhead, you feel a sense of freedom not felt when driving to the farmhouse last night. The invigorating air against your skin in tandem with the golden sunlight makes every part of you feel alive. You arrive in the village and wander through the quaint streets and shops. You feel so welcomed by the hospitable energy of the longtime occupants and the visitors who long for historic charm as much as you. Ivy tendrils grow up the stone walls of a gift shop with a thatched roof. And as you run your fingers through the vines, you feel taken back to an earlier time. The deep amber stones retain the fossils of sea urchins and coral, telling the stories of all that has weathered them through time, 
They convey a sense of endurance and fortitude. Flower boxes overflow with lavender, fuchsia, and yellow orange flowers, colorful reminders of the glorious season. You step into the shop and take in the smells of soaps and candles made with Cotswold's lavender. You peruse a wall of oil paintings, capturing sun-drenched cottages, rich green meadows, and a waterfall. Somehow, the local artists have captured the extent of the Cotswolds' beauty you have experienced on this journey, but in slightly different ways. The paintings make the countryside seem otherworldly, and yet you know how real this land of treasures is, for you have seen it with your own eyes, and given the chance to paint this pastoral paradise, you wonder what colors and elements you would emphasize. You pop into a cafe for lunch and seat yourself on a cushioned bench near a bow window overlooking the main thoroughfare. You watch a constant stream of people who have come from around the world, reveling in the heavenly weather and village and wonder how a storm could possibly upset this day. You slowly sip on your tea, savoring each note of bergamot and orange and the tannins of the perfectly brewed beverage. And even while the sky remains clear, but for a few passing clouds. You heed the recommendation from Malcolm and start your way back to Utopia Fields. You take a different route that winds around the back of the farm. You discover a small waterfall that flows beneath a stone bridge Soft mist rises around the lichen-covered stones, dreamy and mystical. You stop on the other side of the bridge to watch the water cascade into a stream. You close your eyes and take a deep breath. Allowing yourself to get lost in the songs of birds and the rhythmic whoosh of the waterfall, you wish to capture and hold on to every pleasant experience on this holiday to return to whenever you long to remember that the world can be a kind and beautiful place. When you open your eyes, you see that your cat friend has returned. In the distance, the first purple-gray storm clouds to appear hover over the village you just left. You hop on the bicycle to ride it back to the farmhouse and the cat dashes through the fields to beat you. You come upon the driveway moments later. The sun has vanished behind the incoming clouds. The steel gray underbellies are ominous and you look forward to hunkering down in the cozy farmhouse 
As you come to the front of the farmhouse, you find the cat sitting on the front stoop, carefully licking her paws. A sharp wind rolls over the meadows, moving the tall grass and wildflowers in rippling waves. You enter the farmhouse, and the cat follows behind you. You shut the door just as the first fat drops of rain begin to splatter on the earth. You see Felicia and a young couple that just checked in. Felicia explains that she started a fire in your room as the old stone dwelling becomes quite cool during storms like this. She jokes that you seem to have made good friends with Libby and to let her know if she's being a bother. You notice the family dog, Henry, is already conked out by a blazing fire in the main room. Feeling quite tired, you ascend the steps to your room. It's a bit early for bedtime, but you find yourself longing for sleep hours before you normally would. It must be the clean country air and the fact that your guard is down and you are able to make up for all the sleep you sometimes skip out on. Libby races you up the stairs, intuitively aware of what room is yours. You let her enter your room and she makes herself comfortable, curled up on a rug by the fire. A howling wind rustles through the trees outside and you are overwhelmed with gratitude for the warm dry air emanating from the crackling flames in the stone fireplace. The smell of wet stone marries the sweet, peppery aroma of burning wood. Outside, you see Malcolm and his two children running in from the rain. You take a deep breath and let out a contented sigh. You relish the contrast morning and night, and recognize the simple pleasures during the storm fill you with as much contentment and peace as the bright sunny morning on the farm. The room feels like a warm embrace even more familiar and homey than your first night here. You kick off your shoes and change into your pajamas. The sky becomes a steely dark blue, casting the emerald hills in a charcoal hue. You pull back the heavy quilt and curl up in bed. Soothed by the crackling fire and the soft rain. Darkness envelops utopia fields. Sleep begins to tug at you. Beckoning you away from this beloved retreat in the Cotswolds. The patter of the rain brings you back to the room. And Libby hops onto the bed 
and snuggles in a nook between your feet, gently vibrating the bed with her soft purrs. As you drift off to sleep, you think about the beauty of the Cotswolds with its rolling hills and picturesque countryside. You feel the energy of the souls who have loved this land throughout time, carving out a storybook setting ideal for dreaming and sleep. You feel yourself floating, carried on the luscious sound waves of tender rain and the crackling fire, feeling safe, comforted, and so very tired. You continue to surrender, finding peace, finding enchantment, finding bliss, finding 